Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Nettleman. Welcome to another consulting case study. We've talked about lots of things over the past few months on this YouTube playlist. Riparian, legal descriptions, all kinds of good stuff. But the core job of every land surveyor is to locate land boundaries. And this case is a great example because this is all about boundaries. This is our bread and butter of land surveying. And if we can't get this one right, it's gonna be very depressing. This is a case in Oklahoma. And the case in Oklahoma is inside of a platted subdivision. So we have a subdivision from the 1950s. And the platted subdivision is great. It's got distances, it has easements, it's got bearings. It's a very well done, very complete plat. Here's the problem. We have located a series of monuments, or I should say the, the other expert witness has located a series of monuments. And these monuments are existing. They're surveyor rebars, surveyor caps, but they don't really match up with the subdivision plat very well. You know, the subdivision plat says go 100 feet, and these two marks are about 103 feet. The subdivision plat says go true north, and this is off by about three or four degrees. Now, they aren't off a crazy amount, but they're off enough to create a dispute between my client and his neighbor. And both of these people are relying on these monuments. So they're going off these, and everyone, all the attorneys have kind of assumed that these monuments mark the location of the subdivision. So we do the research, we pull the plat, we uh, do a little bit of math from the different legal descriptions of the individual properties, and we notice that things are just not matching up. The monuments on the ground that are located by the other expert witness are not matching many of the distances and bearings of the property owner's lots. Now, the first time I went out to visit this property was about a week before the trial, because I try to combine trips if I can. And I took along a family member who's also a professional land surveyor, or was a surveyor, and we go out there and we start measuring. And what we realize is these monuments are not matching up to anything whatsoever. But we do find a single monument that looks to be much, much older than all the others. This is like gold. So we decide to get out a tape, just a basic 100-foot surveyor's measuring tape, and we start measuring off distances from this old monument to in cardinal directions. So the plat says go 25 feet north from the monument, and we think we know where this one is on the map. So we measure exactly 25 feet, and we just start digging. We dig a giant hole, you know, probably four feet in diameter, and maybe three or four feet in depth. Guess what we hit? The same old monument we found south, we find another one exactly where we expected. Why did the other land surveying expert witness never dig? We don't know. But we find this one, and we run north about 1,000 feet. And every 100 feet where the new property uh, parcels are, we hit another monument. And after about four or five hours, we've hit so many monuments that no one else has ever found. We can't even count. And we think that the monuments that are on the platted map were never unearthed by surveyors, at least in the past 10 or 15 years. That's amazing. This brings us back to a discussion of original monument or resurveyor monument. The textbooks tell us that if we find an original monument, it is legally without error. But if we find a resurveyor's monument, we can either accept or reject that monument if it is based on the plat or not. So what did we do? We ended up rejecting 
all of those newer looking monuments in the subdivision, and we ended up accepting the very old monuments that were buried deep in the earth. We got back to the office and we plotted these old monuments in AutoCAD, and guess what? Based on the old monuments, there were no boundary dispute between the neighbor and our client, which was amazing. I've never felt so good than when I got to walk into court and show the judge brand new looking monuments, which the opposing expert had, accept, had accepted, versus old, beat up, rusty monuments that had probably been in the ground for at least 50 years and showing the difference between the quality of the old monuments versus the new. And that is what makes the expert witness job so fulfilling. When you can use your own expertise combined with the textbooks available to you and come up with a solution that solves the problem. Everybody, the attorneys and the expert, went home with a smile on their face because we knew we did the absolute best we could by locating the original monuments, by doing a substantial amount of research to prove those monuments were the originals and the correct, and having happy clients. With that, I'll leave you to the next video in the playlist.